welcome students myself gazala chawalkar today we are going to learn an interesting topic that is chapter number 11 contour maps and landforms now students contours are a collection of lines which are found on maps that shows mountains valleys and landforms generally contours can be used to understand the map and to know where land will be steep or flat so students let us discuss our learning objectives for today's video so today we are going to learn what is topographical map and then we are also going to learn also going to see an activity which will help us to understand how to transfer three dimensional object that is 3d object into a two dimensional picture that is into 2d picture then we are also going to learn what is contours and contour maps then contour lines then contour intervals and also we are going to study the purpose of contour maps and to whom these contour maps are useful so students let us understand what is topographic map or topographical map now in modern mapping a topographic map or topographic sheet is a type of map characterized by large scale detail and quantitative representation of relief usually using contour lines a topographic map is a map illustrating the topography or shape of the land surface it's a two dimensional way of showing a three dimensional image of earth's elevation elevation means height they illustrate the shape and elevation of surface features by the use of contour lines for example they show shape of hills valleys streams and other features like steepness or gentleness of slopes as you can see here student this is a topographic map with the help of these contours we can determine the shape of the landform students in standard 5th you have gathered some information about how height and relief are shown on a map now students here we will carry out the following activity to understand that is how to transfer three dimensional object that is 3d object for example here we are taking potato into a two dimensional that is 2d picture now students let's start with our activity now before performing this activity very important you sure you take help of your parents while performing this activity now take a large oblique shaped potato and all the other requirements like ruler paper toothpick sketch pen and knife now what we are going to do is that we are going to take the potato and we are going to cut the potato into two equal halves or two equal parts just observe the potato how it appears okay students now we will take the potato and we are going to cut the potato into a two parts so that each part has a flat base now as you can see this in the video it has a flat base okay students now what we are going to do is that rest the cut half on its flat base see now we are keeping the potato and 
we are measuring its height in millimeters with the help of ruler. Okay. Now this is our potato hill. As you can see here, it is tapering from the side. Okay. So this is tapering from the side. So this is called as a potato hill. Okay students. Now what we are going to do is that the next step is that we are going to draw two circles. Okay. And that circle is going to be in equal in size. So we are drawing circles each going round the hill one near the top and other close to the base. So we are drawing two circles. Okay students. As you can see in the video also we are drawing two circles. Now this is one circle is complete. Now we are drawing the second circle. Alright students. Keep sufficient distance between the circle. Okay. The circle near the top will be smaller. So altogether we will get how many circles students? We will get three circles. Okay. Now with the help of the knife what we are going to is that, do that we are going to cut the slices okay of the potato on these circles. So make sure you please take your help of your parents okay students. So you can see here we got three circles yes or no. So together we got three circles. Now what we are going to do is that now do not separate this circles. Okay. Do not separate the slices. So what we are going to do that we are going to insert a toothpick or a piece of pointed stick through this slices vertically. Okay. So that it will not separate. All right, students. So now, students, the, our next step will be without removing the toothpick, what we are going to do is that we are going to place the sliced potato on a piece of paper, moving a sketch pen along the edge of the lowest slice. And we will draw its outline as you can see in the video also. So as you can see here it will be nearly a circular in shape. Okay. Now you can separate the pieces slowly. So we have drawn the last layer. Okay. Now what we are going to do is that after drawing the outline pull the toothpick upwards. Remove the lowest slice directly and keep it aside. Now repeat the same procedure students for the other two slices. Okay. So this one is the second slice which we are drawing now. Alright students as you can see in the video also. So this is the second slice we have drawn. Now what we will do we will remove the second slice and keep it aside and again we will do the same procedure. And again we will draw the outline of this third slice. Okay students. Now students what we are going to do we are going to observe the figure that is formed after the exercise is complete. So what you will notice we will note that you have drawn three concentric circles yes or no and 
we are going to write the height of the potato that we have measured earlier in the center of the innermost circle. Measure the thickness of all the sizes you have kept aside. Give a value 0 to the outermost circle. How will you give the values to the other lines? Think about it. So, do you think that the thickness of each slice that you have measured can help you? Yes, of course. After assuming values to each circle, our sketch of the potato hill will be completed. So, as you can see here, we are taking the intervals of 0, then 10 millimeters, and then Twenty millimeters. Okay, so we have kept the intervals of thirty millimeters. That is the contour intervals. So this is our potato hill sketch is ready. Okay, students. So students, what did we achieve in this activity? So students. We have transferred a three-dimensional object that is the potato into a two-dimensional picture. Students, in reality, it is not possible to make the slices of a mountain or any other landform and place them on paper or on the ground to draw a two-dimensional picture of that landform. For this, different mathematical methods and survey methods are applied. So students, first let us understand what is contours. Now contour comes from the Italian word that is contorno meaning to draw a line that is edge or line that defines a shape. Contours in geography basically means the shape of a mass of land, especially its surface or the shape formed by its outer edge. In cartography, a contour map is a map illustrated with contour lines. For example, topo map that is topographical map which shows hills, valleys etc. That is the map that indicates the physical features of the land. Instead, the contour map is another name for a topographical map or a map that shows the elevations that is height of land on a flat paper surface. The contour maps are a convenient way to visualize flat and steep terrain. It makes it possible to show height and shape of mountains, steepness of slopes, etc. So students, now let us understand what is contour lines. So contour line is a line on a map representing an imaginary line on the land surface, all points of which are at the same elevation. That is height above a plane usually means sea level. The diagram illustrates how contour lines show relief by joining points of equal elevation. Now here we have few important characteristics of contour line. Every point of a contour line has the same elevation. Contour lines separate uphill from downhill. Contour lines do not touch or cross each other. Contour lines are isolines of height. These are drawn by joining the places of equal altitude. The slope between them is assumed uniform. The distance between them indicates the steepness of the slope, gentle or steep. These help in identification of landforms and determine the amount of slope. These lines also help us to understand the type and direction of the slope. 
so students the next one is contour intervals now what is contour interval and contour interval is the vertical distance or the differences in the elevation between two contour lines in a topographical map usually there are different contour intervals for the different maps considering the size of the area to be mapped contour intervals are assumed for example students here in this map you can see here we have interval of 250 okay so you can see here the difference is 250 between all the contour lines see here 5 750 then 6000 then 6250 6 500 6 750 the difference of the contour intervals in this image you can see here is 250 so students now let us understand what are the purpose of contour maps so as we know that contour maps or contour lines are the imaginary lines that join points of equal elevation that is height and that they allow you to read the shape of the earth's surface. Students, by reading contour lines, you can measure the steepness of hill, height of a mountain, and even the depth of a lake or an ocean. So, while studying the different landforms on the surface of the earth, one has to consider various facets of landforms, like altitude, relief, slope, direction of slope and the drainage for this purpose contour maps prepared using particular methods are used contour maps help us to understand the above characteristics of the landforms so students to whom are contour maps useful now contour maps are useful to you can see the pictures here students to mountaineers then to trekkers soldiers and defense officers with the help of the contour maps we can understand the nature of the ground and its shape which can be estimated defense officers use contour maps for strategic planning it is possible to identify suitable site for any project from the contour map of the region. This maps proved to be a great use in planning of a region also. So now students, a model of the relief in an area is shown in figure 11.1a. That is a model of the earth's surface. Now observe it carefully and answer the following question. Now, this is there in your textbook, page number 72. Now, the first question here is, which landforms do you observe in the model? So, the landforms which we observe in the model is hill ranges and flatlands. You can see here we have here in yellow color that is hill ranges and the this blue color is the flatland. Next question is, which colors have been used on them? So, the colors which are used on them are yellow color and the blue color. That is yellow for hill ranges and blue for flatland. So, observe the figure 11.1b and answer the following questions. Now, 11.1b also tells you about the contour line map. Now, this is there in your textbook page number 72. The first question is, what all do you see in the map? So, we see various facets of landform such as altitude, relief, slope, direction of slope. Next one, what is the general direction of the ranges shown in the map? Now, the general direction is the eastern direction. As you can observe the figure students, here is the north. Then here we have the eastern side. And here the western and the south. So you can see here all are here in the all the ranges are in the eastern side. Okay. So towards which direction is the flat land located in the map? Towards the eastern side 
all the flat land is located in the map. What are the maximum and minimum values of, of the lines in the map? So maximum is the 800 and minimum is 600. What do these values indicate? So these values indicate contour line intervals. Next one. Do you find any similarities in the map and the model in figure 11.1a and what are those? Yes, the geography and the landforms shown in both the figures are actually same. They are hill ranges and flatlands. Which figure gives you more information and what is that information? 11.1b that is contour line map gives us more information. It gives us information about the contour line intervals. Is there any similarity between this map and the sketch map of the potato hill? Yes, similar to the sketch map of the potato hill, the contour line map too is a 3D figure that is model of the earth's surface which has been converted into a 2D map. Contour line map is a depicting contour line interval. So students here we have the image that is figure 11.3a shows a model of the Karha river basin Saswad and figure 11.3b a map of the Karha river basin Saswad. Now this image is given in your textbook page number 73. Now based on this image here we have few questions. The first one is in which direction does Fort Purandar lie? So first of all students just note here the compass direction. So no north is in the this side. So obviously this will be the south. This is east and this is west. So Purandar is here. So Purandar Fort lies in the southwest direction. What is the direction of the flow of the river Karha? So you can see here the Karha river is flowing and the arrow is indicating towards the eastern side. So we can say that the direction of the flow of the river Karha is towards the east. In which parts are the hill ranges not observed? As you can see here students in the eastern side there is no contour lines, no contour intervals. So on the eastern side there is no hill ranges observed. Which part of the map is not seen in the model and why? Karha River Basin and Mulamutha Basin are seen in the model but not on the map. This is because the river being flat, it cannot be represented by contour lines in a 2D map unlike the representation seen in a 3D model. In which direction does the altitude of Katraj and Devghat range decreases? So, in the north-east direction. In which direction are higher hill ranges located? See, higher range you will observe here. You can see a 760. Here we have counter intervals of 550, 600, then 650 and 760. So, here in this region, that is the southwest region, the higher ranges of hill are located. So now students study the figure 11.4. Consider you have gone for a mountaineering. You have to conquer a peak on the hill A. See students here there is A marked. Okay. A map of this hill is given in figure 11.4. Studying the contour lines in the map, find the side from which you will reach the peak safely and easily. So for example, if I will climb from eastwards, from this direction, from eastwards, to reach the peak safely as the slope eastwards is gentle and it is not a steep slope. Lesser the distance between the contour lines makes the slope steep. The distance between the lines is greater eastwards which shows the slope is gentle. So students now identify the landforms in the following map. 
Now this is there in your textbook page number 74. Okay students. So in the following image the landforms which are shown are plains then mountains and peaks. So students let's have a quick revision of what we have learned today. So first of all we learned about what is topographical map. So a topographic map is a map illustrating the topography or shape of the land surface. It's a two-dimensional way of showing a three-dimensional image of Earth's elevation. Next, we also performed an activity to understand how to transfer a three-dimensional object into a two-dimensional picture. That is, as we know that in reality, it is not possible to make the slices of a mountain or any other landform and place them on a piece of paper or on the ground to draw a two-dimensional picture of that landform. We also learned what is contours. So contours are lines joining places with the same altitude on a map. Then we also learn what is contour lines. Contour lines are iso lines of height. They are drawn by joining the places of equal altitudes above or below sea level. Next one, contour intervals. So contour intervals is the vertical distance or the differences in the elevation between the two contour lines in a topographical map. There are different contour intervals for the different maps. Considering the size of the area to be mapped, contour intervals are assumed. So we also studied the purpose of contour maps. So while studying different landforms on the surface of the earth, one has to consider various facets of landforms like altitude, relief, slope, direction of slope and the drainage. For this, contour maps are prepared using particular methods are used. These maps help us to understand the different characteristics of the land. The last we also learn like to whom these contour maps are useful. Contour maps are useful to mountaineers, trekkers, soldiers, defense officers. These contour maps help, the, help us to understand the nature of the ground and also its shape. Defense officers use contour maps for strategic planning. It is possible to identify suitable site for any project from the contour map of the region. This maps prove to be a great use in planning of a region. Thank you students for listening and watching my video. Thank you students. I hope that you like my video. Thank you very much.